Morning, everybody. I am Meg from Lovin Stamps, and I am happy to welcome you to my studio for another episode of Maker Mornings with Meg. Today's episode is going to focus uh, for our fourth project on the Greatest Journey stamp set. And so if I haven't convinced you how great this set is, it is the greatest. It's right there on the front of the cover. Um, then hopefully today we'll give you another idea. If you are thinking that you are like, uh, you're not into like biking or hiking or any of those things, it's okay. This is a really beautiful stamp set for all kinds of things. And paired with the designer series paper, here are some of my partial packages. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. So today's card actually makes the most of these pretty papers here. Um, when you get a paper like this that has a wide design with so much, um, you know, square footage here of cool things to see, uh, it's, you know, you hate to like chop it up into little pieces, right? And so we're going to actually make a card today that uses the full width of the design. And uh, we're actually going to use this piece of it here. So this paper is cut from this one. It comes like this in the package, which means you have a lot of choices about how you want to use this. Um, so these are really special designer series papers um, for sort of making the most of those wide expanses. So, uh, and also I'm here. I survived my backpacking trip this weekend. So <laughs> thanks for all of your good thoughts. We had a great time. Um, good morning to Trish and Kathy and Carol and everybody who's on. Make sure you say hi. And with that, I think we are going to flip our camera down and get started with our project here. So uh, we are, like I said, going to use this piece of paper. This is cut to 12 inches, so it's the full width, and the height is five and a quarter. So it's going to layer for us on a quarter sheet of cardstock. So it's going to be just like this. And I picked my colors for this project based on our cardstock here, or based on our designer series paper here, so that um, everything would be nicely, there we go, um, coordinated. And I'm going to pull out my uh, Simply Scored board. I absolutely love this. Um, when I uh, need to make parallel lines for projects, boxes, cards, things like that, this is hands down the best tool to use because um, you know that everything is going to be square the whole time. Um, I can use my trimmer too, but if you get a little bit off on the trimmer, sometimes things don't come out square. So this is really my go-to um, for that purpose. So, hey Kelly, good morning Becky, hey Sue. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I have my little pieces here. If you haven't seen this before, um, maybe you didn't know, but there are these little uh, pieces here with a little peg on the bottom. Focus. Uh, and that little peg pops into the board here so you can mark your spot. So if you have like a complicated scoring thing or you're doing something over and over, it makes it really simple to um, go ahead and mark those. So we're going to score um, here with our cardstock at um, two inches, okay, and five inches and eight inches, okay? Now, on something like this, it matters which direction you're facing. So um, if you think about the piece that you want to be like your full um, card base layer, it's gonna be this panel here that's four inches by five and a quarter inches, okay? So think you know, about whether you're turning your paper this way or whether you're turning it this way. Um, just focus on this one. Whatever's here in this four inch section is gonna be sort of the main of um, your card, okay? All right, hey Kathy, hey Margie. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold now and I am going to just zigzag fold on our score lines like so and that, whoops, what happened here? There we go. Um, like so, what happened here? I think, okay, I need to maybe rescore that. I didn't actually score it when we were doing our video just now because um, it was scored from before and I think that it wasn't scored straight. So let me, pardon a moment and go back. I looked at that and I was like, why is that score line not actually at two inches? Because when I did it the first time, I didn't do a very good job. All right, so now it is at two inches. And look, there's a little tweak in the pattern there that hides my little mistakes. So whoo, no one will ever know, except for all of you watching. So shh. <laughs> we'll keep that between us. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and go ahead and pop it down on my card base. But before I do that, 
Um, on a triple fold card, I like to sometimes add a special closure. Hey, Cheryl. And I'm going to use a piece of twine. So these guys here, these two twines would be beautiful if I was using the other half of um, this paper for my card, but I'm using the orange and yellow, orange and pink half. So I'm going to use this piece of the twine here. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around and so that I have an idea of where um, I want that to go. I know that this will be about what I need for a bow or honestly, um, you could just go ahead and tie it. It's always safest to tie or twist or whatever you're gonna do with your ribbon and then trim it um, from the roll so that way you don't have any like wasted ends, right? No wasted little scrap. Okay, so now I'm gonna untie that. I suppose I could leave it. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and I want that string trapped between the card and the um, pattern paper. So I'm gonna flip it over like this and I'm gonna use my strong adhesive. Um, this is my Seal Plus. You want to use Seal Plus or tear tape or uh, multi-purpose liquid glue will work. Uh, you guys know I love that stuff. Um, but you want to go ahead and use a strong adhesive because you really want um, this to stay uh, down and there's going to be a lot of you know people opening closing people opening closing your card So I'm going to keep that ribbon there. I didn't actually um, Attach the ribbon so I could move it. I don't know if I can do it this way, but like flossy style um, I can move it left to right if I want to so I'm gonna leave that and then I can also Shift it up and down a little bit because of where I put the adhesive. So now I'm gonna layer this down here um, Always smush from the back side. I'm not gonna mess up my layers. And so now we have our card that we can shut right here. And you can see this pretty panel here. Um, we can open this and have it be our whole mountain scene, or um, you could open it like this because we're going to decorate this front panel here and then that will show. Now, if you're thinking, okay, great, where am I going to put my greeting? The good news for that is our greeting is going to go right here so that it's hidden when um, we have our, our uh, card closed. Well, not greeting, I guess that would be the um, the inside layer of our card, mm -hmm. the place you write your message, the opposite of the greeting. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay, so for that, I'm going to need a piece of basic white cardstock, and this is going to be five and a quarter inches by, let's see, did I get it right? Is it two and three quarters? It is two and three quarters by five inches. And that is going to um, go ahead and fit right here for our card. Okay, so we'll get back to that there. All right, so for the front of our card, um, I am loving the stamp set and the choices in Greatest Journey. So for this stamp set, we have um, comments about uh, graduation types of things, about moving forward types of things, retirements. But one of my favorites on here is um, this Mountains of Thanks. So that is kind of a universal <laughs> greeting, not necessarily tied to any particular um, large life event. So thank you cards are one of the things that I send the most. And so this is a great set for that. All right, so for the front of our card, um, I want to go ahead and give us um, some trees. So we're going to go ahead and stamp some trees here. I've got my um, stamp mounted and then I'm gonna use my Melon Mambo. And I know this is kind of a departure. Um, usually we stamp on uh, we stamp on white cardstock or neutral cardstock, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and stamp here on my Melon Mambo cardstock, which gives us a whole different look. And then I have my coordinating die here. This is the little trees that match, and this is gonna pop across here. I have my little piece of washi tape handy and I can tape this down and run this through my die cut machine and through the magic of television, have some trees here to add to the front of our card. So we've got some, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, we've got some trees here to start building our scene. Now, next you can see I've kind of picked all these colors that match. This color here is uh, polished pink, which is an in color. It is one of the retiring in colors. So as always with in colors, um, they disappear when the new catalog comes out. Do not wait to order things in those colors because they um, often go very quickly when people find out they're not going to be available anymore. So um, watch for that. And then I have pumpkin pie, which is a good match for this cut set of colors and mango melody. 
And um, hey, Carol. Hey, Shirley. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, work on our greeting next. And since I have uh, been using our Melon Mambo, this dark pink, I'm going to go ahead and use again for our Mountains of Thanks greeting. So I'm going to pop this on here. And then we have this to add to our card too, okay? So I think that that is a little bit bulkier than I want it to be for our card. So we're gonna go ahead and trim that down. And this is where I find my paper trimmer so handy. So I'm gonna trim here on this side. Uh, this is an excellent trimmer for uh, cutting little bits. Whoops, okay, don't drop your blade in the paper. Drop your blade on the top or the bottom of the paper. And even with these little tiny pieces like this, um, it will trap your cardstock underneath. It holds it on this with these little grippy um, plastic pieces, and it does a really nice job of uh, holding that so that you can trim away little fragments from your um, greeting to get exactly the size you want. So I've used a lot of trimmers in my crafting life, and I do adore this one. All right, so now we have Mountains of Thanks here. And I think we need some clouds, don't you guys? So one of the things that is beautiful in this um, die set is the fact that there are not only um, the dies that cut out things like the forest, um, and then these are the florals. Where's my floral card? This is the floral card that we made together um, earlier this month. So there are dies that match those, but there are also these um, little sort of scenery dies. Uh, I like to call them their accessory images. And so we're going to go ahead and cut ourselves some clouds from Mango Melody cardstock. And this uh, whole card sort of gives the fabulous vibe of being in the beautiful outdoors. Um, and while we're doing that, let's go ahead and cut out this little hiker person here. Um, they're carrying a lantern. They have a backpack on. Uh, so we're going to cut that one here out of Mango Melody cardstock also. And so we have through the magic of television, three clouds and a hiker and there we go. Okay, so we have our pieces here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start sticking some things down because I know where this is gonna go. If I were making this card for the first time, I would hold off and get all the pieces placed before I start gluing, but I'm feeling pretty confident, so watch that come back to bite me. Um, I'm gonna glue just the very edge of our greeting. I had to stop and check and make sure that I had the, um, the, the correct side of it facing me. And we're gonna go ahead and put these just here, I think just above the mountain line. Okay, now you can go over to the left side of your card um, with this design because you're not going to um, interfere with opening the card, but you cannot um, glue beyond this little bit right here. Sorry, my hands are in the way. Because if you think about it, if you put glue on the back of here, then you're gonna glue your card shot, which is, no one wants, okay? All right, so clouds, we have some cool choices. Um, I'm gonna put my um, first cloud I think here, and then my second cloud can go here, but my third cloud is gonna go on a back layer. It's not going to sit on the front layer here. It's gonna sit on the inside of the card. So let's grab some Stampin' Dimensionals and we can put that together. So I'm gonna add some extra height here by adding a dimensional on top of my cloud or under my cloud. Let's see, I don't wanna go over my greeting. So I think we're putting it about there. And I think this one I'm gonna go ahead and put down on here. Now it's always safer to put your glue on the card base um, than on the element. That way you know you're not gonna accidentally overlap something. Uh, for this one though, this is a pretty narrow piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on here. All right, remember with this glue, if you can see it, it is enough and really there, you can see I use barely any glue. You don't need to use a ton. Um, hey, Pat. Thanks, Brenda. I love you like it. Hey, Shirley. I can't remember now who I've said, <laughs> think, or said hi to. All right, so we're going to add our cloud right there. Okay, so we're building this card here with the mountains of thanks. And when you open it, you can open it fully like that. Or you can open it and kind of pinch the front and it has that sort of pretty effect there, okay? But we still need to work in our main element here. So I have our little hiker person 
And one of the um, pieces that I've used for um, our projects this month has been to um, incorporate the circle punches because um, at the moment, the circle punches are not, I think, uh, in the online store, unless they're back. Maybe I can look while we're talking. Um, the circle punches are part of the online exclusives that Stampin' Up! introduced earlier this month. And they um, are available in two sides. They're available in the two inch size and the one and three quarter inch size. And they came out initially because um, people missed them for so long. And then they disappeared right away. Um, and I think that they'll be coming back, but let me see. Oh, they are available again. Okay, so both the one and three quarter and the uh, and the uh, two inch circle punch are available. Woohoo! And so I'm going to show you a trick for this, um, which is going to kind of add to our uh, card here. So instead of using um, the, I just realized I don't have a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock big enough. Instead of just using a white layer um, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with our colors because I'm really loving the saturated look of this. And so I need a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock. And you should remember that for um, projects like this one, um, if you don't have all the colors of cardstock to match, one of the beauties of this paper in this um, Enjoy the Journey suite is that it basically gives you a, a zillion colors of cardstock in sort of different ombre, pat, ombre um, shades. And so if you wanted to, you know, punch your circle from here, you would have that really cool ombre look. If you wanted it from here, it would be mostly pink. If you um, took a piece here from one of these purples, you would end up with a purple piece of circle. Um, it's really outstanding paper from the standpoint that like you'll always have you know, solids or ombres that match what you want because you can just take it from other pieces of the paper. So I really love that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch our a one and three quarter inch circle here. And we're gonna put our hiker on our circle like this, but we're gonna we're gonna make some changes here because I feel like um, the hiker gets just a little bit lost. So we're going to add a layer um, here, and I was thinking like we could put a layer. I'll just kind of show you this here, uh, a layer like this of pink or something you know like that. But in the die set here, we've used this one a couple of times. Actually, we just used it last week to make um, these really cool mountain effects for our um, gift card holder. So this is our, our gift card holder from our last episode of Maker Mornings with Meg. And we used it to make these um, sort of dirt mountainy hills. This die is so cool. So you don't have to use it like as a whole big wide piece like this. You can use it as little bits. So what I did was um, went ahead and cut a strip of um, Melon Mambo cardstock here. And I didn't cut it all the way to the edge, so that's why it's still together. <clears throat> but what I wanna do is I wanna select a little bit of it to put on our circle. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tear this now. Um, I'm gonna kinda look across here and go, hmm, what piece would most highlight our hiker? And I think, I kinda like this one with a little, uh, with the way those, the, the hikes uh, or the peaks kind of come up behind. And that way we have our circle punch and now we can layer it on here. And that really helps to highlight that whole um, effect, right? So I'm gonna grab my um, multi-purpose liquid glue because it gives me the flexibility to like ease the, ease the paper around if I don't get it quite in the right spot. And voila, now we have our little mountain circle here ready for our hiker. Now, I do like the lantern, but I don't hike with a lantern. Uh, so I am going to take the lantern out of this person's hand and just carefully snip here. So if you had um, a way you wanted to use a little lantern on something else, you can of course take it from this piece and use it um, elsewhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and set my lantern aside. Uh, I really like that in this die set, there's this little tiny um, die right here that is a hiking pole. So kudos to Stampin' Up! and the artists who made this because I have two. I wanted to bring in the lighter pink, the polished pink here, um, so that we have a contrast for our circle. So I have these two little hiking pole pieces and one is gonna fit here. So it's sort of silhouette over our hiker and the other one is gonna go here in our hiker's hand, just like that. Cool, right? 
Okay, so let's go ahead and glue those things down. I'm gonna put a mini Stampin' Dimensional, actually I think a whole one fits there, a full Stampin' Dimensional under our hiker here and have that person standing, okay? And then I'm going to add glue. Now, you can, we have um, some adhesive that you can use to um, the, oh gosh, what's it called? The die cut adhesive sheets, the adhesive sheets, and you can put adhesive on your um, elements before you cut them. Um, which might be a good shot in this moment, but you can also add glue here. Can you see? Focus. That is how much glue I'm adding to this. Tiny, tiny, tiny amounts. Um, the nice thing about the multi-purpose liquid glue is that it grabs really well. So you really don't have to. Um, you really don't have to get a lot on there. Okay. You do have to give it a second to dry. So let me give that a second to dry. And then your pieces really state, whoa, that was a lot of glue. Really nicely set. Um, okay, remember to store your glue this direction. We had a little discussion last time about keeping it in a little cup or prescription bottle or um, something like that so that you have it um, always then the glue is down at the tip where you want it so that it's ready to use. And I'm gonna overlap that hiking pole on our silhouette like that. Okay, so we all have that glued down now, and that little hiker is going to go here on the front of our card. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere that. I'm going to use a couple Stampin' Dimensionals, and I make sure I put them only on the side of our card here that's going to stick on the flap. Um, hi, Jenny. And then our hiker is kind of going to go on the up and down, and I'm just double-checking our pieces here. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna tie our string across here. And like I said, I left it so that I could cinch it sideways so that I can move it left and right a little bit if I want. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move it a little bit to the side and tie this. We still have to do stamp the inside layer and I have an embellishment for the front of our card, but we're gonna do like a pause here to kind of look how that's going. And if I want to, I can slide my bow to the side so it's not quite overlapping our hiker quite so much. There we go. Okay, so for the front of our card, we have our embellishments because this is the embellishment uh, that I've included in the, the kit um, or the suite of supplies that you will want for this month. There's, these are the enamel sticker icons. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out. And we're gonna go ahead and use a Stampin' Blend marker to um, color this. And I'm gonna use my Melon Mambo dark marker. Oh, that's polished pink. Well, that'll work too. It's handy. Okay, but Melon Mambo is what I intended to use. Polished pink will also work. It's in our same color, right? We used it. Um, but either way, what you wanna do is you want to color on your element before you take it off the backing sheet. And the reason for that, especially on this kind where you wanna color all the way to the edges of your circle, um, you want to make sure that your overlap, any little messy part that you're hitting the edges, stays on here and doesn't go on your card. So here, like last week, here, you can see I colored a piece that was green, and so the green overage is uh, here. Where did that one go? Oh, that one ended up here on this project. So there's our green trees element. So when you're when I first looked at these um, elements in the catalog, I thought, well, those are not very colorful or very pretty, and they're in the suite with the Enjoy the Journey paper, which is the most colorful. So um, it didn't take me more than a couple seconds to realize, oh yeah, you should color those with your uh, Stampin' Blends markers. So, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and give that another second to dry, but in the meantime, we're gonna stamp for the inside of our card. And I'm just gonna use our Melon Mambo again, and we're gonna stamp some trees here that are going to fit down at the bottom. And I'm not doing a very good job of inking my stamp somehow, so I'm gonna flip that over and stamp again, which is one of the great perks of Stampin' Up! cardstock is that you get a really um, quality cardstock, so you can flip it over without your ink showing through. And let's see, did I do a better job? I think so. There we go, we have a full image down there at the bottom now. I think I was doing something weird with my inking there. Okay, so let's go ahead and untie this for a moment so that we can put our layer inside. I'm just going to use our 
seal plus since it's handy. Oh, I've reached the end. Um, when you see that little red paper in there, that is when you know that you've reached the end of your tape. And so this piece here is disposable. And so it just goes in your scrap bin. And then you will want to pull out uh, a new one here, which happened to have handy, it seems. And this is going to slot right in here. Before you do that though, I always like to make sure that at the top here, there's no um, adhesive buildup um, on the opening portions of our tape holder. So, all right, this is gonna slot in here. This is gonna go here. Sometimes you need to forward it. Oh, not very far, just a tiny bit to make sure you have your adhesive there available. And then I'm going to pop that on, okay? So now we have our adhesive and I'm going to fold this flat. Oh, I like this because our little cloud overlaps our message panel. So you could write anything you want here um, on your inside of your card. And I think this is probably plenty dry by now. So I'm gonna peel it off of here and we're gonna add our little compass rose down here. Um, at the bottom of this circle. And I love this too, because this repeats our circle element. So we have our circle element from our hiker and then our circle element here. And I'm gonna cinch this down just a little more so that it's not quite um, overlapping our hiker so much and tie our card shut. So there we have um, a really great triple panel card, um, triple fold panel card. Um, if you're looking for more ideas on this card type, I actually have several uh, on my blog over the last couple of um, last couple of months, including this one, which um, had this paper from Celebration, the little farmyard one. Kind of same idea. I didn't tie uh, the whole card shut like we did here, but make sure um, you can visit my blog at Loven Stamps. Uh, dot com and see all of the past projects that I've shared there. Lots of different ideas for making the most of um, pretty panel paper uh, that has these, these great scenes on it. Stampin' Up! is great at coming out with designer series paper that comes uh, all together for um, making these really fun kind of scene cards. So, And I love that we got the, the moon or the sun or whatever the time is here um, on the horizon so you can see that uh, really pretty, uh, I guess it's maybe a sunset, right? Um, that really pretty element part of the paper. So think about um, turning your paper so that it works uh, the way you want. You can also do vertical elements of the triple panel um, card where your card would fold this direction instead of this direction. Um, just kind of the same idea. You just need to rethink your starting point and, and where your score lines go. And the biggest thing to remember is to keep that um, card base, the, the biggest piece um, is gonna fit on your on your cardstock panel like that. And so there's sort of the V from the top and the bottom and um, all the way this comes together. Just really a gorgeous card and I love, love, love the colors. Um, I will be sad when the Enjoy the Journey paper goes. So uh, if you are looking for printed instructions for this card, you can place an order in my online store during the month of March for any amount. Uh, because I, uh, oops, um, I have the that available, the PDF for this project and the other three. So here was the um, gift card, one of the gift card holders we did. We did a gift box here for gift cards or chocolate or other things with a cute little tag on it. And we did that card that I showed you. Um, here is that card there. But those four projects, um, the directions are included as my thank you um, for the Love and Stamps monthly tutorials for March for any size order placed in my online store. If you're not ordering from me this month, um, but you still want to support me and my business and also have the tutorials, um, they will appear in my Etsy shop. I know I've been saying this all month long, but it will be later today. Um, they're all ready to post. You just haven't gotten them posted there yet. And that is uh, Loven Stamps Card Mart. And the link is in the video description. So all the supplies are available in the link um, in the uh, video description here. And so you can click on those if you're trying to look for things that I've used in my card. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know. I'm happy to uh, help you out. 
And let's see, Margie said it was super quick and easy card. Yeah, it really is. Um, it probably took me longer to talk about it than to um, make it, which is often the case. Um, but it is a really great card uh, layout and one that I've used on lots of designer series papers. If it has a sideways look to it, it's such a great way to really make the most. And if you have a situation where you need lots of people to sign a card, like you know, a retirement or a work party or a big birthday or something like that. This is a great one because you can um, put your greeting panels on several places in here and have lots of places um, to sign your card available. So, um, or you could even, on, like on this one, you could leave off the, um, the white piece altogether and you could have people sign um, in that pretty, uh, like open space ombre background at the top. So um, lots of possibilities there. All right, everybody, I will be back with one more video on Thursday for the March um, edition of uh, Maker Minds with Meg. And then we'll be launching into April with a new set of um, curated supplies for um, the Love and Stamp monthly tutorials. So I'll be excited to, to share those with you guys. And uh, as always, if you need color things, um, we are about to have a color refresh, which is so exciting. And so if you need ink refills or markers or Stampin' Blends or cardstock in your favorite colors, um, don't wait. Uh, March 29th, which is uh, tomorrow, is when demonstrators will get to see um, the new catalog and hear about those new colors and so forth um, digitally. And so uh, things, the, the, the retiring list will be out. And when things go on the retiring list, historically, they have been lickety split to, um, to go. So uh, just be ready. <laughs> the other thing to know is um, once the retiring list does come out, Stampin' Up! just uh, instituted a new um, web sort of service uh, that they're going to put on the front end of the online store. And I think that it will happen for customers too, uh, but I'm kind of excited about it because it's really frustrating when you would go to the Stampin' Up! store, you go to my online store and you try to shop and things would be really laggy. Um, and so what Stampin' Up! is going to do is in periods of huge order volume where the online systems start to lag, they're going to institute a queue it system. If you've ever gotten like concert tickets or something, when you first go to the website, you get a message that says, hey, you're in the queue. Um, that's good. That's a good place to be. And you're, you'll be in the queue. Um, your place is reserved. It'll just count down until there's like a spot available um, to go into the online store. So don't um, panic if you see that queue it screen when you go to order, when the retiring list is first announced, when everybody's like, oh my gosh, I need this, it's retiring. Um, don't panic about that. It's, it'll, it's a good thing. Uh, the other thing to know is if your cart sits idle for more than 20 minutes, meaning like you don't click on looking at another item or you don't add something to your cart or like move around in the online store. If, if you don't do that for more than 20 minutes, you'll get bumped because you're inactive and then you have to queue again to get back in if the queue is still running. So anyway, it's unlikely that the queue will run for um, the retiring list because well, who knows, right? I'm just telling you about it. And we'll see. And then uh, the um, when the new catalog comes out, though, is probably when you'll get to see it. So, all right, everybody. I think that's it for today. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And I'll be back on Thursday with another episode of Maker Minds with Meg. And if you want to see a couple backpacking pictures from my weekend trip, they're posted um, on the Facebook page. So uh, you can check those out, too. So. Anyway, have a great day, guys. Happy stamping.